In this video, we're going to look at sets for JavaScript. Hey guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com. And in this video, we're going to look at sets for JavaScript. And sets are very much like arrays. They are lists of items. The main difference between a set and array is a set can only have one of any item in the set. So if you have a set of pizza toppings, for instance, and pepperoni is one of those pizza toppings, it can only be in that set one time. With an array, you can have lots of pepperonis in that array, it doesn't really matter. So in this video, we'll look at all things set, we'll look at how to create them, how to add things to them, how to remove things from them, how to iterate over them, all the good things, and it should be a lot of fun. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor and the Get Bash Terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below as well as link to the playlist with all the other videos in this JavaScript series. So check that out if you haven't so far. If you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeb.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. With all my courses, videos, and books for one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so I've got our basic starter code we've been using throughout this whole series. I've called it sets.html. And let's just come down here and create a set. And like most things in JavaScript, to create one of these, we just create sort of like a variable, some sort of container to hold this. And I'm going to call this names and we have and we set this equal to a new set. So there are several ways we can create one. We could just sort of instantiate one like this and then add things to it or we can add things right off the bat. So if we wanted to add things right off the bat, we just put our brackets inside of here and, you know, we just put some names. So this would be John, uh, Tim and April, right? Uh, that's just one way to do it. Or like I said, actually, let me comment this out. And let's do it the other way. We'll just sort of create it without adding anything to begin with. Now we want to add items to our set. So if you wanted to do this manually, you would do it like this first way right here. If you wanted to do it programmatically as your program continues on, as you want to add new things from time to time, you would do it like this. We just call our names dot add. And then inside of here, we pass whatever we want. So we can pass in John. We can then go names dot add. Maybe pass in Tim. Try and spell Tim right. We don't want to offend Tim. Uh, names dot add. And then finally, let's go April. So okay, we've got this. So right off the bat, we can do several things here. We can find out how many items are in our set. So let's document dot get element by ID and output to our demo p tag, which is up here. And let's just grab names dot size. So if we save this, head over to our web browser, I'm in my C slash JavaScript directory. And let's come down here to our sets.html. And we see there are three items in our set, which makes sense. There's one, two, three. Now we can add a fourth item, right? So let's go names dot add. And I don't know, let's just put Bob in there. If we save this and run it, we've added now a fourth item. If we come back over here, hit reload, of course, now we see there are four items there. Very cool. We can also remove an item if we want. So let's names.delete and let's get rid of Bob. He wasn't in there very long. Now, if we save this and call the size of this thing, we will see once again, there are three. Very easy to add things and to remove things from your set. I mentioned at the beginning of this video, a set can only have one instance of an item. So let me comment this out. If we have John, Tim, April, and John, and then call size, it looks like there's four things in here, but there isn't. There's only three because John can only be in there once. So if we save this, head back over here, hit reload, we still get three. Now, if we went like lowercase j, this is a different item, right? So now there are four items because JavaScript, this is case sensitive. So these are not the same thing. John and John, uppercase and lowercase are definitely not the same thing. So kind of keep that in mind as well. We can call a Boolean on our set. We can like sort of ask, hey, is there a John in this set? So we can come down here and say names dot has and then pass in something. So let's say, hey, is there a John in there? This will return a Boolean, true or false. If there is a John in there, of course, it'll be true. Come back here and hit reload. Sure enough, true. If we change this to uh, Steve or <laughs> Steve, whatever, uh, and then run this, we're going to get a false. There is no Steve in this set. So very cool. All right. Now, okay, this is great. But now how do we get the things out of here? How do we iterate through our set and do something with it? Well, let's create a variable here. Let's call this text set it equal to nothing to begin with. And let's create a for each loop and loop through our set. So let's go names dot for each. 
And I think we've done four each loops before. And we want to call a function with a value. We want to get the, each value out of our set. Okay. And then here we can just, you know, do whatever we want to do with those things. So let's take our text variable and let's plus add whatever the value is. Plus, let's put a line break just so it's easier to read in HTML. And there we go. So it'll loop through here, add each of these items, John, Tim, and April to our text variable, and then print them one on each line. And that should work. Now we can just come down here and let me grab this guy again and paste out our text variable. So if we save this, head back over here, hit reload, we get a nice list, John, Tim, and April. Very cool. And again, we can try this a second time by adding another John in here just to sort of confirm that sure enough, when we hit reload here, even though we're looping through, there's still only one John because there can only be one John in a set. That's what makes a set a set. So pretty cool. There are circumstances where you might want to use a set instead of a regular old array. These are probably a little bit faster than an array if you're worried about something like that. Think about sets. If you have some sort of data that you have to only have one of each one and you want to make sure there's only one of each one, a set is definitely a good idea to use for that. And uh, pretty simple. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 200,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.